Hey everyone, welcome to the Wilson Homestead. So, the dreaded day is almost up on us. We are getting frost tonight or in the morning. So, I have a lot of plants, a lot of annuals in these pots that I have on my porch that I would like to save for next year. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some cuttings and I also have caladium bulbs and stuff like that that need to be dug up and stored for the winter. So I just thought that I would bring you guys along and show you what I'm doing. So let's get to it. This is an osteospermum daisy. And I am just going to get a few pieces off of the growing tips of these. Okay, so this is our cutting, and what we're going to do to get it ready to go in the potting mix is we're going to take off all these bottom leaves. Just leave a few at the top, but you can see I've taken off all the rest of them. And then we're just going to make a little hole in our potting soil. Oh, let me do it up here so you can see better. And we're just going to stick it in there. And hopefully it will grow roots here in a few weeks. Okay, so I am digging my caladium bulbs up out of the centers of these pots. And what I'm going to do with these, I have never overwintered these before, but I have read that we are going to leave the leaves on here and let them die back naturally. And once they do that, then we can cut them off there and store this in a brown paper bag for the winter. And it says it's a good idea to kind of check on them about once a month and make sure there's no rotting going on. So that's the plan. So I did a few cuttings off of the huge Wandering Jew plants that are on the front porch and a few off of the Creepin' Jenny that were in my hanging baskets. Um, every cutting is pretty much the same. You're going to want a four or five inch cutting, remove all the leaves from the bottom, leave a few at the top, and then just stick them down in the soil. I'm running out of daylight, so I hope that you can still see this. Um, I just wanted to show you the difference in this Wandering Jew plant that I have out in my yard. This one gets more, a lot more sun than the ones on the porch, and look how red it is. Now I have sweet potato vine in this pot and the deer unfortunately kept it mowed this year. But I am going to dig down in there and see if there's any sweet potato tubers that I can store for the winter. If not, I'll just have to buy some new ones next year. I would really like to have the black ones anyway, so if there's anything in there I'll save it. If not, I'll just get new ones next year. This was my favorite New Guinea impatien this year. Oh, I'm so sad it's all over, but I am going to try to take some cuttings from this plant too. I'm just going to pinch a piece off like that and remove all the bottom leaves. And I'll have to remove those little flower buds in there too. And after I get all that stuff removed, I'll just stick it in the potting soil. This is a coleus. Coleus are super easy to take cuttings from. You can actually just take a cutting and put it in a glass of water and it will grow roots. But I'm just going to go ahead and do these like I did all the other ones and just take a piece of it 
take the leaves off of the bottom, leave a couple at the top, and stick it in the potting mix. So, hopefully I'll have some pretty nice plants next year. So, this part of the video is actually on a separate day. Um, I had to wait for it to actually frost before I bring in these canna lilies. And you can see that last night they got frosted pretty good. So, now I'm at a point where I can dig up these rhizomes and get them cleaned up. Look at the poor coleus. They're so sad. But actually, these osteosperm daisies, they can take some cold. They still look really good. The bacopa still looks pretty good too. I got my canna rhizomes dug up and I got as much dirt off of them as I possibly could. Now I've seen some people spray these off with a hose but I'm kind of afraid of rot if I do that so I am just going to let them dry naturally and once they dry out some more most of the dirt will be able to be brushed away so I'm not really going to worry about it right now but my next step is going to be cutting all of this foliage off and I'm going to come about six inches above the rhizomes and I'm going to cut everything off. I've got all the foliage cut off now and I just want to kind of look these over and make sure that there isn't any rhizomes that are rotten. If there are ones that are getting soft and starting to rot I'm going to want to get rid of those. But these all look pretty good so far. I will inspect them again after they have had time to dry out some more. So what I'm going to do with these now is I am going to lay these out in a single layer in my basement and let them kind of cure and dry out for probably three weeks. And then once they're completely dried out, I'm going to put them in a cardboard box and I'm going to close three flaps on the box and leave one flap open just so it can get a little bit of ventilation because they need a little bit of air. But they're going to stay like that all winter until about February and then I'll pot them up and get them ready for the spring. It's pretty much the same process with these tuberous begonias. Um, you can see the little tubers kind of look like almost like a mushroom and I am just gonna cut all of this dead foliage off and then I'm gonna let these cure for a few weeks in the basement and then once they're dry I'm going to put them in a brown paper lunch bag and store them there until February or March and then I'll just pot them up and let them do their thing again. As you can see, this is a really easy process. And this is going to save you a lot of money because you're not going to have to replace these plants every year. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time here on the Wilson Homestead. Bye, guys.